Good morning and welcome to our stream service here at the Episcopal Church of the Resurrection in Rainbow City, Alabama. Our service today can be followed along uh, either in the Book of Common Prayer with Morning Prayer Rite 2 for this third Sunday of Easter. You can also follow along by going to our website, Resurrection RBC, that's for Rainbow City, dot Dio Alla, that's D I O A L A dot org. And when you go to that website, you can go to the worship section on that front page and you'll see a bulletin for our morning prayer service. You can follow, also follow along with the readings for the third Sunday of Easter at lectionarypage.net. Our service will begin on page 77 in the Book of Common Prayer. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Our service will now continue in your service bulletin or on page 79 in the Book of Common Prayer with the Confession of Sin. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Our service continues in your bulletin or on page 80 in the Book of Common Prayer. Lord, open our lips to which the response is, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. And then we will all say together, Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Our service will continue with the singing of the Vanity. The words for the Vanity can be found in your bulletin or on page 82 in the Book of Common Prayer. If you're familiar with the tune, please feel free to sing along. Come, let us sing unto the Lord. 
Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Our service will continue with the psalm appointed for today, which is Psalm 116 verses 1 through 3 and 10 through 17, which you can find in the readings for the third Sunday of Easter found on lectionarypage.net. We will read this psalm in unison. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me, whenever I called upon him. The cords of death entangled me. The grip of the grave took hold of me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray you, save my life. How shall I repay the Lord? for all the good things he has done for me. I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Alleluia. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brother, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus, so that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized. And that day, 
about 3,000 persons were added. The word of the Lord. Our canticle is the first song of Isaiah, which can be found in your bulletin or on page 86 in the Book of Common Prayer. We will sing this canticle together if you are familiar with the tune for this. So please feel free to sing along. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the people. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion. Ring out your joy for the Great One in The midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my Savior. A reading from the first epistle of Peter. If you invoke as father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb, without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the earth, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him, you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God. The word of the Lord. Our canticle is the Song of Mary. We will use uh, hymn S-186, S-186, if you have a hymnal with you. But if you are familiar with the tune, uh, please sing along with this canticle as well, the Song of Mary. My 
My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour, for he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed, for he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He has showed strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath hope in his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Luke. On the day of the first day of the week, two of Jesus' followers were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God, and all the people, and how our chief priests and the leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they indeed had seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us 
while he was talking with us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us, that same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The word of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I think many of us have found in our lives that there are several moments that were pivotal for us, several moments that, that stood out in our lives and got us to maybe where we are today. I can think of several such moments in my own life, choosing to go on a pilgrimage with our diocese here in Alabama years and years ago going to St. John's College and learning from their Great Books program, joining City Year as an AmeriCorps member in Washington, D.C., getting ordained, and many, many others. But when I look back on all of those events, what I find is that there's a common thread, one particular event that affected all of those things that came after it. And it was my confirmation. It was in that moment when Bishop Parsley laid his hands on my head that I felt the Holy Spirit come in me for the first and most intimate time in my life. And that one moment, that one deep, an intimate experience with God changed the way that I looked at all things and it affected every single course that I took after that. That moment of confirmation, it made me want to get to know God better. It made me want to study the Bible, the scriptures. It made me want to go and become an acolyte in church to get more involved in the life of our church community. It made me want to do more outreach, which is what would eventually lead me to become an AmeriCorps member with City Year. It made me want to deepen my relationship with God which led me to saying yes to that pilgrimage with our diocese here. And all those moments and everything in between is what led me to be here today, what led me to my ordination. That one event of my confirmation, that one deep, close, and personal experience with God, that moment cut straight to the core of my being and changed it so that my life would never be the same again. That idea of cutting to the core of our being, really cutting to the core of our heart, cutting to our heart, those are the words that we hear in our reading from Acts of the Apostles today. It's the effect that Peter's words in describing what had happened to Jesus, in describing the story of Jesus, the story that we share here every Sunday that we have gotten to know more and more deeply and intimately through our own life in the church. That story that Peter gives the words that he says 
we are told that those words cut to the heart of all the people who are there listening. And that's not to say that these people just had their minds changed or were convinced by such great rhetoric that Peter had to give. It's not to say that they thought, well, you know, this sounds like it might be a good idea or maybe even the right idea. No, what's going on is something deeper and more intimate in these people's lives. It's not just a change of mind. It's not just being convinced of one thing or another. It's a deep and intimate change that would affect their entire lives, that would change things for them forever. This idea of this effect, this idea of this change, it's something that we see in a physical sense in the risen presence of Jesus in our gospel this morning. This gospel that we once again turn to as we did on the Wednesday of Easter week. This wonderful story of the meeting of Jesus on the road to Emmaus. And these two people, Cleopas and his traveling companion, these people who weren't disciples of Jesus, they weren't one of the twelve, but they were close followers of Jesus. They were admirer, admirers and followers of Jesus' teachings. And these two people who knew Jesus well, who had been on the road with him before, when they see him in this moment on the road, so much has changed about Jesus that they don't even recognize him. It takes walking on this road, going to dinner, and experiencing Jesus breaking the bread before they realize who has been with them this entire time. This transformation that Jesus has is a sign of our own transformation. When the words, when the experience of God cut deep into our hearts as they did in Peter's words to all these people on the day of Pentecost. This is the effect of the change that Jesus, that God has on our lives. There's something new and unrecognizable about us, whether we want to realize it or not, whether we see it or not. Something has changed. Something's been transformed. We are renewed, restored, resurrected even. Now, recently I had somebody who, sa who said to me, how do we remain relevant as a church in this world? And I think our lessons today really provide us that answer of how we stay relevant. And that answer is this, by showing others the transformation that has gone on in our hearts by showing others that we have been cut to the heart by the work of God and Jesus in this world. We show it by revealing the change that has occurred in our hearts. That there is a change, a renewal, a restoration, a resurrection that has occurred in us, a change so deep that nothing else could ever cause that. Nothing else could ever cause a change so deep and so profound in our hearts as our relationship with God in Jesus Christ. And showing that, showing that change in our hearts, showing that we have been cut to the heart, and transformed is something that we can do at this time as well. In this health crisis, in this global 
pandemic, people are searching. They're searching for answers. They're searching for whatever it is that they can grasp at in this time of uncertainty and fear. And that's something that we can provide because of that change in our heart, because of that change in our being. There is a comfort that we have as Christians through our faith. We know that times, yes, are uncertain, but that we always have hope in these times. That's something that we can provide because of the transformation in our hearts as Christians. And it's something that the world desperately needs right now as well. We remain relevant in this world because we can provide hope and comfort to people in a way that no one else or nothing else can. And we do that because we have been cut to the heart. We have been transformed and resurrected by our Lord Jesus Christ. And so now it is our role to go out and show others that transformation that has occurred in us so that people can see that transformation and they can go and strive for it as well. We go out and show how we have been changed, restored, and renewed so that others can see that. And others can say, well, maybe it's time for me to allow myself to be cut at the heart by Jesus as well. Our service continues in your bulletin or on page 96 in the Book of Common Prayer. And now let us affirm our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our service continues with the prayers, beginning with the Lord's Prayer, found on page 97 in the Book of Common Prayer or in your service bulletin. The Lord be with you to which the response is, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our prayers continue with suffrages A. Uh, we will say it responsorily. 
Um, I, I will say all the parts uh, to make it easier, but please join in with me on the parts that have the R by it. You can find suffrages A in your bulletin or on page 97 in the Book of Common Prayer. And again, please join me on the parts that have the R by it, which means response. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Now we will pray the collects. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of the bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into morning, Drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that, having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to whom to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity, but in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, comfort and relieve your sick servants, and give your power of healing to those who minister to their needs, that those for whom our prayers are offered may be strengthened in their weakness and have confidence in your love and care. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, our Heavenly Father, you have blessed us and given us dominion over all the earth. Increase our reverence before the mystery of life and give us new insight into the purposes for the human race and new wisdom and determination in making provision for its future in accordance with your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Almighty God, whose Son had nowhere to lay his head, grant that those who live alone may not be lonely in their solitude, but that, following in his steps, they may find fulfillment in loving you and their neighbors. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now the prayer of mission. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now I offer up this time, if you wish to offer up your own prayers to God, whether aloud in your own homes or the comments below or within the confines of your own hearts. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for being able to worship and to love you. Hold up these prayers, we pray, that we have given either aloud or within our hearts. We continue to offer these prayers up to you. We thank you for continuing to give us a place which we may do that, which we may offer our prayers up. We ask all these things in your most holy name. Amen. Now turning in your bulletin or in the Book of Common Prayer to page 101, let us say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all, whom all you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory, 
And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And now let us bless the Lord, alleluia, alleluia, to which the response is, thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And just for a few announcements, um, uh, Bishop Sloan has continued, as many of you already know, um, our social distancing mandates um, until at least uh, May 17th. Um, so that's Sunday, May 17th. So we'll, we will continue to worship uh, online as we have, whether uh, live stream through Facebook or our recording later on YouTube. So um, we will let you know uh, what the plan will be after May 17th, um, as soon as possible. Um, but for now, um, we will continue to social distance and not meet in person um, uh, up, up to and possibly after May 17th, um, which is a Sunday. Uh, also, uh, please join us on Wednesday. Um, we will have another live stream service here at the Church of the Resurrection, um, and that will be at 6 p.m. So uh, please join us on our Facebook page at 6 p.m. And you will be able to watch that service later if you are not on Facebook uh, from the recording um, whenever that, uh, the, the upload for that um, happens. And unfortunately, sometimes it takes a little longer uh, than other times. Um, other than that, um, please uh, continue to um, do your duty, uh, social distance, uh, love your neighbor by uh, not getting them or yourself sick, and um, take care during this time. Um, there's many resources out there, including at our own Church of the Resurrection, that you can use at this time. Uh, to help uh, you in your learning and your Christian formation. And now have a wonderful and blessed rest of your Sunday and a wonderful week. See you on Wednesday.